First things first, I need to make things abundantly clear that I think the 2024 product is better than 2023, 2022, 2021, 2020. I think the product is better. The pay-per-views have been good. The Impact Plus shows, I keep calling them that, uh, have been solid. The roster has improved a little bit. There's, there's some holes in it. We talk about the holes quite a bit. But overall, the company is um, putting out a better product. I have to throw that out there first of all. So the Greg Blantons, the Barbara Dangs, the people who get in the comments and on social media say that all I have to say is the bad stuff, which, which is not true. My real followers know that that is not true. Uh, but I got to throw that out there first. I talked, um, well, before I even get to that, 2024, uh, you know, January 2023, December, good things were happening happening on social media for the company. The marketing and promotion was in a good place. They had a real plan for TNA uh, for that, that relaunch. There was a lot that I was praising. I was even giddy at one point with, the improvements. I was I was loving the graphics. I still love what they're doing with the graphics. Um, I, I like the tunnel quite a bit. I like the first tunnel they did, but the, the one in the middle, I really, really like. Uh, there's improvements. OK, they they improve the ring announcing, which I think Jade episode by episode is getting a lot better. They've added fresh talent to the roster. OK, so there is there is steps they have taken in a good forward direction. But I had said, going into the TNA thing, I said, this is their one last opportunity and probably the last opportunity any company will ever have to establish themselves as the alternative. Now, that's easier said than done because you're, you're talking access TV compared to TNT. There's no there's no comparison between the two. You are not going to surpass AEW overnight. They have the most nut job fans, you passionate fans want to lick Tony Khan's nutsack like that you'll ever seen a, see in professional wrestling. But the uh, but the groundwork had to be laid. You had to lay the this, to begin the groundwork to create demand. And I think they were taking positive steps to do that. But I would say, you know, a few months into the year, we're probably not going to get there. I don't think that's where um, I, I think that opportunity has come and gone. And again, it's all about the groundwork. It's not going to happen overnight. But there was a there was a period of over a few months where the chatter was insane. And I don't know that they fully took advantage of it because they didn't take the bulls by the horns. They took a lot of very positive steps in the right direction, but the bull, but the horns were not taken. There were not the major improvements. There was a lot of very minor improvements that did add up, that did snowball into some, some quality shit. But, you know, major improvements, obviously within the production quality did not happen. I've been told that internally there is frustration with that, but clearly at the top, it is not a priority. Uh, you know, there were still production snafus or TNA plus shows. It's not a priority at the top. People have to come to that realization, unfortunately. The, the one thing that, well, there's two things. Um, I had said we were going to know after Snake Eyes. I, I said many times that we were going to have drunk goggles on for snake eyes and hard to kill. It was going to be at the end of the Orlando tapings that we were going to know what we were getting going forward. And I, I think I've been pretty, uh, pretty correct in that assumption. But what I had said around the end of the, or not what I haven't said about the end of the year, but what I've been saying recently, I'm sorry, is that they're closer to, Impact Wrestling 2023 than they are any era of TNA. It doesn't matter if you're going back to the very beginning, if it doesn't matter if you're going to the, you know, kind of the hot period, you know, the AJ Styles period, if you're going to the Hulk Hogan stuff, if you're going to Pop TV, Destination America, like it, 
I'm, I'm talking about any any era of TNA. They are closer right now to Impact Wrestling 2023 than they are of are to TNA. And I'm I'm pointing that out because that is the era that that frankly they decided they needed to upgrade from, that they needed to update, they needed to improve from. But we're still pretty close to that, unfortunately. And you can't hope that more than 80,000 people turn, tune in if the show still looks like the one you were producing for 80,000 people previous. You have to dress for the job you want. That didn't happen. But I think it's it's clear at this point they are competing to be the solid number three. Uh, NWA obviously will not is not catching up to them, but they are making big strides because they're pulling in really quality audiences. The show looks very, very good. Um, the show's probably the best it's been since season two. I can't speak for MLW. I've heard Mike Gilbert talk about it a little bit. It doesn't look like they've been taking the next step for a while. So they're not on the heels of TNA. Like TNA is is they're they're number three. I used to think Ring of Honor was going to surpass them when I knew that Tony Khan bought it. You know, I said there, I I I got in here, so they're screwed. People are going to choose Ring of Honor over TNA. I've been very, very wrong about that. So they, they've cemented themselves as number three, but now it's about what can we gain on the, the market share? And that's where the opportunity was missed because all eyes were on TNA a couple of months ago. And I don't want to be as negative to say that the ball was dropped because, you know, the Scott Nemore thing did throw a big wrench into the situation. But there was not a plan to continue that momentum into rebellion. I'm going to do a very separate upload about rebellion and some ideas that I have that I would have implemented to get the to continue the buzz into rebellion. But that just didn't happen. And rebellion was a good show. My 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 kids said it was better because we went to both. They enjoyed rebellion more than they did hard to kill. And I think that I did too. But the opportunity has been missed. I get I'm, I'm a part of a lot of Facebook TNA groups, not by choice. People add me to these all the time. And I always have to leave them. Um, but the question that I see a lot, you'll see someone once a month post a picture of the UK, they'll post pictures from 2011, 12, whatever. And they will say, will we ever get back to this? I think it's clear at this point they will not, but they can very much surpass what the Impact Wrestling era was. But they are such a distant number, you know, a number with the distance between number three and number two is so stark at this point. I think it's pretty clear that we're not going to get there. We're not going to be like on the heels of uh, AEW anytime soon unless they lose their their tv deal with tnt they, they might be you know <laughs> they might be trying to get on access tv at that point but I, the last thing i'm going to say here is a lot of fans will say well they're on access tv and that's why no one's watching it look access tv is not that obscure it, it is obscure i think they said like the average viewer is uh, average show gets like five six seven thousand viewers like it's obscure but it's not obscure obscure it's it's obscure because it's a channel that that produces content that nobody cares about but it's not an impossible channel to get like if you get philo for freaking ten dollars a month a streaming service like you get access tv you, you know what i'm saying so it, it, it's 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 not impossible to get i don't have it on youtube tv but sling has it you know, it's it's not impossible to get it. I don't know about the, the cable companies at the moment. I know that I had many different cable companies and uh, years ago and was never, never able to get Destination America. You know, access is not that freaking obscure. Uh, I compare it a little bit to True TV. True TV has one show. This, this is a one show. It's just like Access TV. It has one show and it's Impractical Jokers. 
That is the only fucking show on that network. They did an alternative stream the other day of the Boston Celtics versus Miami Heat. And I say alternative stream because, um, and that, that's actually a really good deal for True TV to get those rights. But uh, I, the, on, I think it might have been on ABC. I don't remember what network had the main game, but they had 5 million viewers or whatever it was. On True TV, they still manage like 500,000 viewers. So what I'm saying is like if the product is there, the demand is there, like people are going to tune in. They're, they're going to find a way to get to it. Like it's again, it's just not it's not that obscure that nobody has it. It's just obscure because nobody knows about it. And the content other than the main show is no one cares about. So um, I'm a little disappointed in it because I wanted to see them put their best foot forward. You know, and, and again, I just I don't want to sound like super negative to that. They don't care. They haven't been trying because that is not the case. It's just that the, they didn't take the bull by the horns the way they needed to. Like this was their one opportunity where you had to go all in and that didn't quite happen. And there's there could be various reasons for that behind the scenes. But the fact is, it didn't really happen. So I think fans have to come to the realization the company's a number three. It's going to stay there. We can hope and we can pray for more viewers and more people to attend the shows. But I will say, uh, as I sign off here, one thing that I've noticed attending Hard to Kill and Rebellion, and, and again, Hard to Kill, I was third row. Rebellion, I was first row. I am sitting around people who don't watch the product. Not, not, not haters on the product. But like very, very casual wrestling fans that are learning about TNA at the show. They're even sitting up close, which is good. But um, there's people around me who don't know the product. So when you see that there's a thousand people, eleven hundred people, don't don't assume like, oh, there's all these TNA fans. Like, there's a lot of people giving the offer the, the company a chance that are still learning, which is a good thing. But, you know, and a good sign that some people are still giving it a chance. But um, right now, what they need is for the, those people to translate to um, additional viewers. And, you know, I don't know that that's quite happening, but uh, the product has been solid. Uh, but it but it is a number three. And we need to come to the realization that that's where they're going to be at.